and welcome back. In the previous set of videos, you saw us install the intake, alternator, power steering pump, and start to replace some of the brackets, electrical connections, getting the wiring harnesses kind of laid back in place. So what I would like to do next, because it would be easier to do this uh, since we have the front crank also, uh, front, front crank pulley or harmonic balancer, uh, whichever you want to call it, installed into the front of the engine. Uh, and since I no longer need the clearance in there, I'm going to go ahead and get the radiator reinstalled. And that will allow us to continue to start plumbing up our coolant lines. So what you see here is the factory radiator that we removed. And you'll notice there's a couple of dings in the corners. One's just from age. And, and two, there were some dings that are pretty close to these little tubes where the coolant actually runs through. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with this radiator. I don't believe even with the dings that I caused in it when it was removed that um, it's going to leak. And I could fill it with water. I hear what you're saying. Verify that there isn't leaks that way. But you won't really know until you put it under pressure. Uh, now, with that being said, I went ahead and bit the bullet with all the other work that we're doing on this truck. I would really hate to put this back into place, get it under pressure, discover there's some kind of pinhole leak, and then have to pull the radiator completely back out again and replace it. So I went ahead and bit the bullet. It wasn't too terribly expensive and got a replacement radiator that you see sitting over there. Now, it's not an OEM unit. I couldn't get the OEM unit. They're like with a lot of stuff these days. It's pretty much on indefinite back order. So I went third party. And the third party one I could get a hold of, it, it actually had really good reviews with it. So I'm going to run with it. So I'm in the process right now of just either using the hardware bag that came with the radiator, or if I can, I'm using the hardware that came off the old radiator. So in some of these positions where they had mounting hardware, where it had a fixed nut or a bolt goes into it, the spacing was the same on the old one versus the new one. I was able to reuse that hardware. In other cases, I had to use the hardware that came with the radiator in three cases or four cases at least. And on this particular aftermarket radiator, it's these four that are running across the side here that the front uh, two, I think it's the condenser and the transmission cooler that bolt to the front of this radiator on these four points. I had to use the hardware they provided because the hardware I got out of the factory radiator, the nuts were too wide. Now it's the same thread pitch. I've already threaded the bolt in the verify it'll accept it and it's fine. But in the other areas, such as here and on the sides, I was able to get the existing factory hardware out of the factory radiator and I'm going to go ahead and use it in lieu of the hardware that came with the radiator. Not that I think the hardware that came with the radiator is bad, but if I have the option to use factory hardware, I'm, I'm going to try to use factory hardware. So I've got the hardware transferred over to this at this point. We've got our bottom rubber isolators pulled off our old one, stuck, stuck onto our new one, and we're ready to do the reinstall. And so far, I'm not seeing anything missing as far as a mounting point or a hose connection point or anything of that nature that would make this significantly different than the factory one. Now, there's some cosmetic stuff in here that's a little different. You know, you'll see some ribbing and the plastic here on the factory one that isn't here on the aftermarket one. But other than that, they, they look pretty much identical to each other. Uh, and what I'll do, I'll put a link in the description to the particular brand uh, this one is. I did order it through Rock Auto, so it came in a Rock Auto box, but it's, it's not a Rock Auto radiator. It is a specific brand one. Um, it may be FSC. If it's not FSC, then it's another one. But anyway, I'll, I'll have a link in the description. So like I was saying earlier, you've got the uh, air conditioning uh, condenser and the uh, transmission oil cooler uh, that get bolted to the front, or I should say slide in and affix to the front of the radiator. So what we'll do is we're gonna cut our tie wrap that's been dil diligently holding those back so we can get in here and do other work. 
uh, and then we'll get these, we'll get the radiator and everything situated in place and start mounting everything back up. So this is where it gets to be a little bit of a Jenga puzzle because uh, you got to have the radiator somewhat in here and but you've got to get it in in such a way that these tabs you see here slide into those square spots that were in the, the front of that radiator. So I'm gonna work on getting that radiator in position. I'm gonna work on getting these into where they need to be. And then uh, once I get it in here and kind of get things situated and get ready to bolt it all down, I'll bring you back and, and show you what it looks like. So I'll catch you in a bit. Bye. And welcome back. So I just wanted to show you this a little bit, figured it might be helpful. So when you're putting this in, as you can see, it is a bit of a Jenga act um, to do this. And this top one here, uh, the silver one, if you look at its lines, the silver one is your transmission cooler. Uh, the dark black one is your AC condenser. Uh, and you can see on the passenger, or the driver's side here, sorry, of this radiator where they slot in. So the silver one slots in on the top tab and the third tab, and the air conditioning condenser slots in on the uh, second tab and fourth tab, uh, respectively. And I just pulled that out by mistake, but I need to get that flap out of the way. So what I'm going to do is, um, and like I said, you kind of have to, you can see that. Let me just push this back in there while I've got access to it. There we go. So all I'm doing is kind of starting these where they need to be, getting them in there. And you can see the radiator is kind of cocked out a little bit. So kind of getting everything to line up where it'll push into place and rest where it needs to. And then we can get the radiator into, at that point into each of the bottom mounts. And where it bolts up here on the passenger side to secure it to the, so each one of these, uh, coolers or radiators oil cooler condenser where it secure where it secures on the radiator is those four fasteners we were looking at on the passenger side and you can see where it's going to kind of line up again this one hits the the silver one hits the first and third and the black one hits the second and fourth the only other thing to be mindful of uh, is that over here you also have a fastener but this fastener has to be over here on the other side of where it bolts in here. So this little nub, when we push the radiator in, we got to be mindful that it actually clears this part here, comes around to the other side, and then bolts in. So again, I just wanted to show you that it is kind of a Jenga puzzle until you get everything lined up to where it needs to be. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to continue working with this and getting it into the lower mounts. And once we have it into the lower mounts, then uh, we, we should be good. But I will, uh, I'll chat at you in a bit. Thank you much. Bye. And welcome back. So you can see we've got it mostly in place at this point. Um, with one correction, I misspoke earlier. Your air conditioning lines, uh, let me get some light in there so you can better see this. Uh, the one I said earlier um, that would come, this little deal right here, you can see that air conditioning bracket with that little nub, put my finger on it, that has a bolt right there, and those are your two air conditioning lines. I thought they came on the other side of this radiator, but they do not, so that is a correction from earlier. They actually sit on the outside of the radiator when they bolt in, just like all of these fasteners here. So earlier... Uh, at least what I found uh, the best to do here was to take and get, as you saw earlier, with this side, of the, the passenger side of the radiator out of the lower mount so it can swing towards the engine, which allowed, allowed this, all four of these tabs for these two coolers to line up and kind of just to start to slide in place. You can then hook in the driver's side mount and then use that as a pivot to make sure your lines are clear. Uh, like on, for instance, for example, the transmission cooler on this one's got a 
a black piece of plastic on a spacer and I had to pick that up and move that out of the way when I did I was then able to use that one anchored in as a pivot point to pull the passenger side in towards the frame and then get it into its lower mount and as you can see here we still have to put the bolts and everything but you can see that we've got our bolts and everything lining up at this point so It'll get a lot sturdier and a lot better once we get everything in place, but you can see that we're we're nearly there. And like I said, it was a bit of a Jenga puzzle, uh, but the easiest way, again, that I found to do it was to hook in the driver's side, lower mount, use twist this side out towards the engine. That kind of lets you get this one started and this one started on these slots on the end. Pull your lines out of the way, and then you can pivot and pull this one forward until you can get it to drop into its mount. And that generally looks like it's going to line everything up well enough for us to get our bolts in and get everything else started. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to continue to work on this. I'm going to get our mounting hardware in, but I wanted to bring you back and show that to you. And hopefully that's of help if anyone else is also doing this same job. Uh, and I will bring you back when we get this complete. Oh, there's one other item that I noticed with it. Now, this is supercharger related. It's not related to doing this radiator, but putting this radiator back in make me find it. The, the intercooler for Pro Charger mounts to the front of the grill, as you see here. But you'll notice there's an oil cooler here. And you'll notice that oil cooler line is touching the intercooler for the turbocharger i'm sorry supercharger it's been that way for three years but i want to fix that because if that continues that's going to rub through that oil cooler line and generate one hell of a mess so what i think i'm going to do is i want to undo this bottom mount to this intercooler and put some washers on that just to pick this side of the intercooler up and kind of pull it away a little bit on the bottom just to give it some separation so it's not rubbing up against that line uh, but I'll also you know, send an email to ProCharger and let them know that that's happening again I, I didn't notice it when I first put it in mistake on my part and like it's been that way for three years but uh, we're we're gonna fix it now and I'll I'll chat at you later uh, talk to you in a bit bye So I'm going to show you a little bit more of the bolts on the passenger side here. So we've got our upper isolators in and the bolts are only started. They're not tight. Same with all of our hardware. But what you're dealing with are four 12 millimeter bolts, two on each side, one for the condenser, one for the transmission cooler. And then you're dealing with uh, four, I'm sorry, two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the air conditioning line in that you see I'll get you some light on this right there you see that bolt you see your air conditioning lines come into this this coupler before they go to the condenser and there's a bolt right there that's 10 millimeter that secures it the radiator also, the oil cooling lines, I believe those are transmission cooling lines. Hopefully they are. I believe they are. But going to the other cooler, let me put it that way, is over here on this side. And it's actually on the side of that bracket that you can see there. So you'll see that those two lines going into that bracket. And then it has that 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolt that comes in from the side and secures right here. So you're dealing with that as a 10 millimeter Again, on the front, securing the air conditioning lines to the condenser is a 10 millimeter. And they're dealing with these four 12 millimeter bolts. So what I did was get the 10 millimeter ones fasteners in first because, you know, they oriented the lines of where these needed to set. So again, this one's hand uh, loose. It's threaded in but loose. So is the other one. And then once those were in place, then I just worked on getting these four uh, 12 millimeters where they needed to be and what I'll do now is go ahead and um, uh, Secure the radiator go ahead and tighten the top bolts and then I'll go through and tighten the uh, Remaining of the hardware But I just want to show you that hopefully that helps you out Hopefully that shows you kind of the 
the orientation of how these stack in here. Again, you've got the black radiator, which again, I believe is your, I'm sorry, you got your black cooler, which I believe is your transmission cooler. You got your air conditioning con uh, condenser in front of it. And then finally you got your main radiator. And what looks to be, I think this may be a power steering cooler yeah i'm sorry earlier i may have called this an oil cooler i do apologize this is the power steering cooler because it loops into the power steering uh gearbox so power steering from my understanding uh transmission from my understanding air conditioning condenser and finally radiator for the engine itself so 2500 is is stacked with a fair bit of uh Fair bit of heat heat dissipation ability, I guess is one way of putting it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and work on getting this tightened up, and then I'll bring you back for the next piece. Thank you much. Bye. And welcome back. Uh, what you see here is a collection of the coolant hoses that made up the uh, coolant flow of the system that we took off during the uh, deinstall. So I'm working through it right now to see which of the parts of the new ones that we kept versus um sorry new ones that we purchased versus the old one we kept this is entire assembly and this is as you can see this says that that is the uh, coolant bottle uh, to radiator hose which in fact it is uh, this longer run that you see here is the one that goes to the top of the radiator uh, which would normally be like the the overflow from the coolant bottle which in this case it is it's just a bit longer since the coolant bottle is going to be located all the way on the back firewall and we showed you in a previous video that we went ahead and opted to also buy a new coolant bottle uh, just because I uh, wanted to get one nice and clean uh, to put back in to this system. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time with this, a little bit of time working with this to kind of get it all back in place. It's, it's going to be kind of hard for me to film this because these coolant hoses do spaghetti just all over the place and make various connections to different points along the way. And in some cases, they kind of interjoin and connect to each other. But once we get it all situated and get it back in here, I'll, I'll do my best to try to run through that. Now, in some of my uninstalled videos, uh, especially I know for this lower one, we did kind of go over as we were taking these hoses out where they were located. So, uh, so not to be redundant and kind of show it twice, but again, once we get it all kind of situated and, and back in here, um, then I'll, I'll bring you along and kind of try my best to show you what went, what went where, uh, even though as spaghetti as it is. Because what you're dealing with is you got, you got the connections to the coolant bottle. You got connections to the heater core and the firewall. You have connections to the water pump. You have connections to the oil cooler. And finally, you have connection to the radiator. So, that <laughs> so that's where it's all coming from. It's a... A lot of coolant connections and a, and a lot of routing of, of plumbing. Uh, but we'll get there. And uh, like I said, I'm going to work on this for a little bit, and then I'll, I'll bring you back once we get them in there. Thank you much. Bye. And welcome back. 
So we've got our first of our coolant hoses on. So I'm going to try to go over these as best as I can to give you an idea of kind of how they route. You've got the two hoses that come off the back of the firewall, uh, top and bottom. If you remember, we cut the old ones. We had new ones, so we replaced them. They come down into this assembly here that you see that we reattached to the passenger side valve cover. If you remember when we did, uh, uninstalled it. Um, the bottom hose hits this bottom aluminum pipe, which then routes into the oil cooler top fitting. The other firewall um, hose that comes out of the firewall is the center aluminum pipe, which comes around here and hooks into this tube on the water pump. The topmost hose hooks into the, if you're viewing this from the coolant bottle side, from the right hand side of the coolant bottle, it hit, hits and transitions to the top half of the aluminum pipe. Sensor here. So that's the first set of connections. We have another set of connections. Uh, if you notice, we still have the bottom of the uh, coolant tank, which you obviously, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, we did go ahead and install our new coolant tank. And we went ahead and routed our electrical and hooked up, uh, reattached our uh, hood light uh, because it, uh, it anchors onto two of the studs for the mounting for the cooling bottle. So you can see we still have the uh, left side as viewed from the front of the coolant bottle, the small hose on the top, we got the bigger hose on the bottom, uh, we have the bigger hose on the bottom of the water pump, as well as the bottom fitting uh, for the oil cooler that you see right there that still needs to be attached to. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take this piece, which makes up the majority of those connections, along with that replacement piece right there I'm pointing out with my toe, that in conjunction with this, uh, will get us all of our uh, connections and I'll, I'll kind of show you how those route when we come back But that'll get us all of our connections with the exception of obviously the upper radiator hose uh, Which will do as kind of a final step when we get the shroud and the, the fan and everything else installed We're gonna go ahead and take care of getting this installed and we'll bring it back. Thank you much Okay, welcome back. I want to show you that bottom routing so the two bigger hoses obviously are pretty easy to determine. One side goes to the radiator, one side goes to the bottom of the water pump, but you got a left and right hand T. And the right hand T, as you can see, snakes over and connects to the lower part of the coolant uh, adapter for the oil cooler. And this left hand side of that T comes up and it's just sitting there. And that'll interconnect in with the next set of pipes that we're getting ready to install. So when we get those pipes installed, I'll, I'll bring you back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So this is the upper set of uh, cooling hoses. Uh, it comes off the, as seen from the front of the cooling bottle, left-hand side of the cooling bottle, transitions to the upper two sets of aluminum hoses, or aluminum pipe, comes over here and eventually hooks into the little overflow spout uh, in the radiator. The bottom comes off of the um, bottom of the coolant tank, transitions to the bigger of the two of these top pipes, comes down, shoots straight down, connects into this pipe, which if you remember is the left hand side of the T for this bottom fitting. Uh, and at this point, that is all of our um, coolant hose connections with the exception of the upper one on the upper water pump, which goes to the upper part of the radiator, which we won't be able to put in until we get the cooling fan and shroud and everything else back in. So it'll probably be one of the last things we do uh, as far as the assembly. And then we'll do coolant bleed and all that fun stuff. So hopefully this was helpful in case you had any questions or had a 6.4 and wanted to know how these coolant hoses route into each other it's um it's, it's a bit of a tangled mess not gonna lie but uh, they got coolant running into a lot of places on this motor you got an oil cooler 
you got an EGR cooler, you got the heater block in the back, and of course you got the radiator itself, and finally the normal water passages, which are fed by the water pump. Actually, it's all fed by the water pump, but my point is there's a lot of stuff they're cooling with coolant on this motor. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and call this a video at this point. Uh, so it'll be at least uh, one, possibly two more videos yet of doing installs before we get to the point that we're ready to do startup for the first time. With that being said, I'll let you go and I'll talk to you later. Bye. One final thing I wanted to wrap up in this video that I forgot to mention earlier um, is that uh, when we're doing the install, since all of these uh, hoses were new and they can sometimes be a bit of a pain to get put in place. And I, I showed this earlier in a, in a previous video, but just to show it again, I used a little bit of silicone paste. Uh, rubber parts love silicone, so you don't have to worry about rubber being degraded by it. It won't. Um, just put a very, very, very small amount on the inside of the hoses when you go to put them on and they'll they'll slide on like butter it's a hell of a lot easier than trying to wrangle them into position once you got them in the position uh, you'll saw that a lot of the pre-built assemblies that we bought from chrysler or the hoses came with those yellow clips that we were talking about earlier in a previous video once you get the hose in place you just twist these uh, clips to remove them and then that spring clamp underneath will just snap in place at that point and, you know, secure the connection. Uh, but with that being said, I just want to put, put that final piece of information out there. And then we'll bring you back for the next one. Thank you much.